What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Rivas Talk Sports. In today's video, I will be giving you my win-loss predictions for each NFC East team, as well as providing if they will go over or under their projected win totals in 2024. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. So the first team that I will be talking about is the New York Giants, and they are expected over under is six and a half going into the, into the 2024 season. I do have each game color coded. Red means that I am predicting there'll be an underdog, and green means that I'm predicting that they will be favorites in this game. Now, here are a few things that the New York Giants kind of have to keep in mind going into the regular season. Competent quarterback play. Are they going to start Daniel Jones for the whole season? Are they going to shut him down halfway through the season and have Drew Locke carry the load? How is the offensive line going to perform? Are they going to stay healthy during free agency? Did they really upgrade the offensive line? So those are key things for this Giants team as they gave up the most sacks this past season. They have a new defensive coordinator and Shane Bowen, which I believe is a great hire compared to Wickendale, who had a very aggressive style um, in 2021 and 2022. Shane Bowen led the Tennessee Titans number one in rush rushing yards allowed per game. And then this past season, they tied with the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs in opponent touchdowns per game. So I do believe this is a solid hire, but there are a few things that the New York Giants are going to have to kind of look into the season, especially with Saquon Barkley going to the Philadelphia Eagles. What is their offensive daddy going to be? So going to the season, hopefully the offensive line can stay healthy and hopefully what they did in the offseason was an upgrade. What's going to happen with the competent quarterback play going to the season? How is the new defensive scheme going to play out? So there are a few factors into the season, but based on what you look into the schedule, um, week one, very tough game against a very, you know, weapon loaded team, Justin Jefferson, Aaron Jones, and that Brian Flores Vikings defense. And if you're a Giants fan, that week three to week eight schedule is brutal. Pretty much every team from week three to week eight is a playoff team. And except the Seattle Seahawks, pretty much every team from week three to week eight is pretty much potential um, leaders in their division. So that is going to be tough, tough from week three to week eight. And then you also see a tough stretch from week 12 to week 17. We're also kind of have a stretch of going against playoff contention teams. Now, after looking into this um, team, um, worst case scenario, this could be like a wasted year for the New York Giants. They just move on from Daniel Jones. They're just ready to kind of tank a little bit and just get that first round quarterback next year, or they just do their best to be competitive. But with my prediction, I do think that the Giants will probably go 6-11. and 11. I think they'll go under 6.5. Worst case scenario, maybe four wins. But four wins, that's like offensive line can't block. Quarterbacks can't do anything. They can't get the ball to the receivers. And the passing defense just isn't there. Best case scenario, meaning the ceiling, I can see an 8-9 and nine season. If they could get a couple wins from that tough stretch from week 3 to week 8. Um, and then as well as, you know, gain a couple more wins from week 12 to week 17. Um, but yeah, week three to week eight, if they can go three and three, they could definitely, you know, get eight to eight to nine wins probably. But I just think that's a tough stretch. Um, Brian Dable doesn't seem like the coach that is the to tank the season. I think he's going to do his best to keep his team competitive. Um at some point during the season, I do think they're going to shut Daniel Jones down to prevent injury and paying in that massive contract and probably bring Drew Locke in. So overall, my prediction for the New York Giants is I think the middle ground for me between worst case scenario at four wins, best case maybe eight, nine. I'll probably just meet him at the halfway point and I'll just give him six, six wins, 11 losses. So me personally, I think they will probably go under six and a half. Now, the next team that I'm going to talk about is the Washington Commanders. They had the expected over under of six and a half. As you see in the schedule, pretty much every game on this schedule, I believe they'll probably be underdogs with reasons. 
with reason. Um, there was there was a number two overall pick um, in the in this 2024 NFL draft. So um, it's very there's a lot of uncertainty for this Washington Commanders team. They drafted Jaden Daniels, who was the rookie quarterback. So there's um, a lot of excitement from the Commanders fans of how he's going to perform. I'm a big fan of Jaden Daniels. I think he's great at pre-snap processing he is a much better dual threat quarterback than sam howell so when the pocket is collapsing i can trust Jaden daniels to get out the pocket and get some yards with his legs and he's going to be in that cliff kingsbury air raid type of style offense similar to what cal murray had his rookie season so i believe that the ball is going to be slinging a lot for the commanders as well as play keep up for the commanders but a lot of things that also need to be factored into the commanders upcoming season they do have a new coach and dan quinn they have a new offensive coordinator is the line going to protect Jaden daniels the commanders did give up the second most sacks this past season so yes they did get a new center they did get a new guard but how's that left tackle position going to play is are they going to be able to protect Jaden daniels on an everyday down basis the passing defense was not there last year as I just felt like they were just getting picked apart in the passing game. But thankfully, in the offseason, they did get a lot of defensive players in free agency and as well as the draft where they potentially got the number one rated defensive tackle in the second round in Jerzon Newton. They got a top slot corner in Mike Samra still. So they did have a good quality draft class. Um, but overall, the commanders... They have some upside to their game, but it's what's the biggest question is how is the line going to protect Jaden Daniels? How is Jaden Daniels going to do in his rookie year? And how is that new renovated defense going to be? But overall, just look at the schedule and based on what I'm thinking, I think that the commanders could probably go seven and ten. Um, I do think they'll get a couple losses early on the season, but probably get that W at Arizona. Um, but with these wins, I think these are type of wins where it's going to be shootouts um, basically towards the end of the season where you see um, against like the New Orleans Saints, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Atlanta Falcons. Um, I The commanders do give the Philadelphia Eagles quite a fight. So even though they'll probably lose to the Philadelphia Eagles the first time around, I think the second time around, um, Dan Quinn and that team will probably get a feel of how they're going to perform. Um, but against the New Orleans Saints, very aging defense. So I think Jaden Daniels would definitely use his legs and kind of use the youth of the team to kind of rally and beat the Saints. And I'm not a big fan of the Atlanta Falcons. Yes, they had a top um, free agent move in getting Kirk Cousins to elevate that offense, but I don't think they did much on the defensive side. So I think late in the season, I can see the commanders kind of creeping up and stacking a couple wins here and there towards the end of the season and become a bit competitive. Um, but my floor for the commanders is kind of similar to the New York Giants, maybe around four, five-ish ceiling, maybe eight or nine, depending on how the commanders are. Um, I think they'll slightly improve this year than last year. And me, I think Jaden Daniels is my dark horse rookie of the year. So we'll definitely see how that goes. But me, I think the commanders could probably get an extra win, extra few wins towards the end of the season to kind of get, you know, a win or two above the New York Giants. So I do have the commanders going seven and 10 um, over that six and a half. So that is my projection for the Washington commanders. Now, the next team that I'm going to be talking about is the Dallas Cowboys. They have an over under of 10 and a half. And as you pretty much see here, I pretty much have them favored in pretty much 14 out of the 17 games here. Um, I'm guess, you know, we all know as long as Dak is there, CeeDee Lamb's there, and Michael Parsons there, they pretty much dominate the regular season. Um, so that week one team at Cleveland, Cleveland's like one of the best defensive teams at home. So I think they'll give Dak and CD a tough time. So I think that could be a potential loss there. But if you look at the um, schedule, this seems to be a fairly easy schedule for the Dallas Cowboys. I can be wrong in my prediction of being of them being favored this much, but there are also a couple questions coming for the Cowboys. Did they boost up their rush defense because their game ran on a lot? If they were to go away to an opposing team and be underdogs, can they win? Because they lost every single game away as underdogs. With Dan Quinn no longer being the defensive coordinator and Mike Zimmer coming back in, can they continue to ascend as a top five defense? 
The left tackle is with the New York Jets, so now they have a rookie as a left tackle. Can he consistently protect Dak Prescott in the pocket? Does Zeke have his pep in the step to continue to be the bell cow at the Dallas Cowboys? And if opposing teams shut down CeeDee Lamb, are there other wide receiver options that can take the load off CeeDee Lamb and make um, the offense better? So those are a few questions for the Dallas Cowboys coming into the regular season. But me personally, Cowboys do tend to, to, to dominate the regular season. So with my prediction, I have the Dallas Cowboys going 11-6. and six. I do have them hitting over that 10 and a half. That week one, tough loss away at Cleveland. Very strong defense. Um, but as you see here, as you know, they go after the bye, I think they'll lose at San Fran. Pretty much if you kind of analyze my prediction schedule right here, they're pretty much going to lose majority of the time against teams that have top rushing offenses or love to run the ball. Cleveland Browns, very run heavy team. Hopefully Nick Chubb will be healthy coming into the season. Lions, Montgomery, Gibbs, San Fran, McCaffrey. Week 11 is going to be a tough game against the Houston Texans. Um, but I think the Texans really approved in the offseason. So I think they'll give the Cowboys a run for their money um, and probably be the team in Texas than what the Cowboys are. But from th after that loss to the Texans, I think the Cowboys would come back and be motivated and go on a nice winning streak before losing to Philly later on. But like I said, the Cal the Dallas Cowboys tend to dominate the competition during a regular season. And let's not talk about how they are in the playoffs, but this is my prediction. I do have them going 11 and 6 over that 10 and a half. Now, last but not least, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. Expected over under is 10 and a half. And I gotta say, out of 17 games, I personally think that they'll be favored in about 15. They pretty much got an A-plus grade in the offseason. They got Saquon Barkley. They got Bryce Huff and a few other offensive um, and a few free agent pieces. And they also had one of the best draft classes, getting the number one corner in the draft. Um, they also got Jeremiah Trotter Jr., who's going to be a quality linebacker. They got Cooper DeGene, who's going to not only be safety, but a cornerback as well. So the Philadelphia Eagles pretty much – had a off season to pretty much win a Super Bowl this upcoming season. Like that's how dominant they were in free agency and in the draft. Now they do have a new offensive coordinator in Kellen Moore and a new defensive coordinator. So the coaching staff is a bit different. Um, the questions that I have is how are the Philadelphia Eagles going to be without Jason Kelsey? How is that offensive line going to be? They have Saquon Barkley, who's been riddled by injuries. Is he going to have his pep? Is he going to have more pep in his step and a more boost in his legs to be a nice bell cow for the Philadelphia Eagles? With the new offensive coordinator and Keller Moore, he seems to have a very pass heavy system where their number one wide receiver tends to get a lot of targets. So is Jalen Hurts going to throw the ball a lot? and have A.J. Brown be the impact playmaker on this team. And now let's talk about on the defensive side. After that Week 11 loss to the San Francisco 49ers, this defense or team as a whole pretty much collapsed. I don't think it was a lack of talent. I think it had to do more so of what was going internally within the organization or maybe within players. It wasn't a lack of talent, but something really happened within this team. Can this team bounce back from adversity, adversity as a team? Um, did this team improve defensively to stop the pass as the pass to get picked out get did get picked apart a lot but me personally I do think that this team improved overall in the draft off season I think the pass defense is getting better new defensive coordinator so hopefully that would definitely get this team to gel better defensively and a new offensive coordinator hopefully the offensive could get the ball clicking and rolling but overall with my bold prediction for the philadelphia eagles i have them going 12 and 5 i do have them winning the division and going over that 10 and a half um i'm sure a lot of you have saw my previous slides with the new york giants but you'll probably see it again with the philadelphia eagles at week 18 
I think week 18 could be a 50-50 toss-up. Um, I don't think that they'll be underdogs, but I don't think they'll be high favorites, especially if they have if they clinch a playoff berth, potentially get a first-round seed. That week 18 game may not matter to the Philadelphia Eagles at this point, in which they could probably afford a loss and still be okay in the playoffs. So I think week 18, depending on how the Philadelphia Eagles are during the season, I don't think that game would matter much to the Eagles based off my prediction. So that's why I have week 18 just being a loss to New York Giants. The Giants under Dable last year towards the end of the season, they started to become very competitive and play for their coach. And I think that will be very similar to this team where the Eagles may not take week 18 that serious, but Dable would want his troops to rally back and get that W against the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, But overall, these are my predictions um, of how I think each team is going to do in the NFC East. But like I said, these are my predictions. And I really hope if you guys are a fan of each of these teams, you guys stay healthy. You guys continue to exceed expectations. And I hope you guys achieve everything you guys want to achieve in the upcoming season. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy the content, please give this video a thumb up thumbs up. And if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel as I make weekly football content every Mondays and Fridays. And let me know your thoughts on my predictions and how you guys feel that these teams will do in the 2024 NFL seasons and just comment below. Thank you so much and catch you next time.